Hi everyone, welcome to Growth Versus Entrepreneurs Inner Circle. Uh, today with us we have a David. So David, what are we going to talk about this week? Ha, huh, um, there were a lot of questions last time, reactions on our, our previous video. Yeah. People say like, hey, value proposition, it's, it's like a holistic thing can you tell a little more about that so i may be happy to explain how we typically not from a theor theoretical a point of view but on a practical point of view how we use a, a value proposition to to use in our daily marketing and and, yeah. and, and experimental marketing work so yeah. if that makes sense to you i'm happy to talk about that yeah uh no i think that sounds great actually because i've seen so many websites and you're kind of like what are they doing what is what are they selling it can be mm -hmm. so confusing so i feel like Many times it's so important to get your value proposition right for yeah. a landing page or the marketing material you send out to your customers so they really understand what you do and how you do it. Yeah, it's a bit like with the elevator pitch. Huh? You should yeah. be able to tell that in like 20, 20 seconds. Yeah. Um, first of all, confusion, value proposition is not a mission uh, or, or a vision of a company. Uh, typically, I like to structure it in marketing material like in, in four or five blocks. Okay. The first block is typically you want to connect to a pain or a gain um, yeah. with a customer. Say like, hey, uh, do you want to generate more leads uh, in yeah. a certain way? Or do you want to save money? Or do you want to save time? Or are you experiencing any kind of, of problem or, or situation in your company you like to solve? That's the first thing because nobody knows you. You send out something to them or people vaguely know what you do. So you say like, hmm, I'm connecting to that pain. That's exactly what I have. I want to read first. So that's yeah. the first thing. Try to connect to that audience. You want to be able to understand your client or your customer. Exactly. And it's sort of a little bit the, the why, but yeah. the, not really the why. It's like more the pain or the gain. Yeah. And then the, typically in a sort of a question, uh, yeah. asking like, hey, do we, do we have the same or on the same, yeah. um, on the same length there? Uh, and then the second is a little bit, still a little bit about yourself. Um, uh, what do you do as a company? But really brief, like, hey, we are solving that problem or typically that problem for that type of company. Um, so if in, in, in order of priority, the second one is the, the least important. You don't want to talk too much about yourself, but at least give some credibility like, hey, we are solving this problem for this type of audience. Really important. Eh? Yeah, and I think one of the things that I've seen typically from landing pages when we've worked with it, don't get too techy about it or start using big words mm -hmm. where it's really hard to understand what you do. Try to yeah. limit it down to a sentence or two, exactly. uh, nothing too long. Yeah, we see typically see that in, in a scale-up phase or, or, or yeah. technical companies like trying to, to, to tell about all the features they have. That's not really important. It's really about the value you bring to, to, to customers. Yeah. And that, that brings me to, to, the, to the third part. Yeah. Is, uh, you tell what uh, um, what your company do, but then also explain in a sort of a process how you do it. Yeah. It's like step one, we do A. Step uh, two, we do B. And then really explain like, okay, we help you in three or four steps that the customer knows, okay, how much time do I need to to, uh, to take out of my time to, to get the solution running? Huh? Yeah. Uh, what's, what's the cost of change? So be clear on the paths uh, towards success with your product or service. Yeah. Uh, and also when you're trying to explain the how process, what would you limit it down to kind of like? Yeah, it's typically three or four steps. Uh, or example, yeah, we start with an intake. Uh, second is we do a basic setup fee or uh, we do a, a, a proof of value of, or a proof of concept, a test period. If positive, then we do a rollout and four, we help you along the way yeah. if you have more questions. Something really like Simple. explain your, your process. If you, yeah. Even if you're selling a product, you have to tell them how they should start using your product and how yeah. you will help them. So that's that's the third part. Yeah, not get maybe into too much detail about it. Keep that as no. your secret sauce yeah, when you exactly. talk to them. Yeah. And and then the fourth is is for me the most important one, and that's explaining like what is the return on investment of your product. Tell them how uh, people will. Uh, earn more or get more revenue because of your product or save more time or get to market faster. Uh, it can also that your product or service takes away a risk. And these, a combination of these elements yeah. uh, or one of these elements you should put forward and then express it in a metric. Like okay. that much kind of euros, one metric or that much time uh, or that much. I mean, that, that, is, that is really important to, to, to get a number there or at least explain really numbers like quantitatively how what is your return on investment um if you cannot do that i mean people will say like okay it's maybe nice to have 
Okay. So be able to, to express that in a good way. What, what an alternative could be is that you say like, hey, with this product, you get to a certain level. Yeah. You, um, you, you can be compliant or something like really that's done qualitatively. But the most important is to getting a quantitative metric okay. of your return on in, uh, investment. That's really important. And what about call to actions? Uh, what, should, what would you say? Where should we place the call to actions yeah. on that? If you're then talking to put that on a landing page, then typically I would definitely um, put that above the fault, as we say. And like on the first screen and then also like uh, on the return on investment part below uh, when people read through that that at the end is the same call to action yeah. that is repeated to them uh, not too spammy on every uh, every page but really like uh, below uh, as well um, and another addition if you want to put this on the, on the landing page then typically what we do is also put a sort of a testimonial to, to it because if customers tell about you that's even way stronger than, than just putting up a number yeah. so if you put it on a landing page good call to actions above the fault and below and then one testimonial from a customer if that's on a video even better people like uh, nowadays video that converts even uh, way better mm. That's great. Thank you so much for kind of breaking that down mm -hmm. for us. Um, we do have a template on our website and we'll be sharing you with you the link shortly. Um, and if you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Okay. Thank you. Thank Until you. next Bye -bye. time. Bye.